Kia ora, my name is Matt and I'm building a sop with camel. Uh, today I'm slightly deviating from that. Uh, I'm having my first go at steam bending stuff, in particular cap strips. Uh, I'm going to walk you through making a form and how I've set up for steam bending or steaming timber. Uh, fortunately the timber I'm doing is quite small, uh, but it's worked out really, really quite well. Quite well, quite impressed with it. Um, cool, hope you enjoy the video. Cheers. This bend radius. And you see I've put a clamp on the end there just to keep those two from uh, warping and tearing out the screws. Um, obviously there's a lot more pressure with the wider timber uh, than there was with the thinner cap, strip, cap strips. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to uh, make up a uh, block to form, to steam form these into better curves. So this is what I'm starting on now. Uh, it's my block. So basically you're going to cut out there, cut out a triangle. Uh, cut it back there, straight line, uh, and then shape that curve in there. Once I've got that done, I'll then do a saw cut, which will be the width of uh, that thickness, the thickness of the um, cap strip to fit in. So that's the that's the plan for the next hour or so before I could just be to work, um, just to knock that up. Right, getting stuck into it. You can see what I've chiselled out so far. I think. Hard for me to see the camera from this angle. There we go. Um, so I'll take it down a little bit further. You can see the line I'm working to, which is that one, that bottom line there. It's the bottom line of the cap strip. And eventually I'll saw cut down to there. But I just want to take out the majority of the meat here, which I've done. Now I'll try and be careful uh, and just get it closer to that line. It's one eighth of distance apart, roughly. So I'll try and get it to less than that. Um, right, wish me luck. And you can see if I go over that line, it's a bit like painted by numbers. Broad strategy is I've got a line running across there, I want to get to that, and I've got the cut line through here, and I want to get to the bottom of that. And I want to pay attention to this line and leave this side slightly raised because I can bring that down using the square. So that's the broad strategy. Let's we'll see how this goes. This is where a bandsaw would be useful, but I don't have one of those, but I do have a coping saw. Um, the scroll saw worked better than I expected, so, uh, so, see that? so it's a reasonable cut. It's not quite wide enough, so I need to make it a little bit wider. 
in order to fit the uh, this in. So slightly misjudged that, but that's okay. And I've got to clear out the remaining crud that's stuck in the centre. So I've broken the mo most of it out, but I'm just going to run the handsaw through it a few times and uh, see if that'll clear the rest. the remainder. don't know if you can see through that. Um, right, so what I'll now do is I'll now try and work on widening that. Actually it's okay down there. And it's okay there. Oh, excellent, so I've just got to take a little bit off the top there. And I might try and do that on the scroll saw. So we can get some sandpaper down there. like that. Cool. So I think that'll do for the moment. Um, I've got some saw marks on here, or rasp mask rather. I'll sand those off uh, and then this will be pretty much done, I think. Right, so tomorrow I'm going to all base sealer down to the, down to the lip. Uh, this is a piece of firewood and it's got a bit of blue stain in it and I don't want that cross transferring onto decent timber. No idea if it could or would but for the price of a quick coat of paint I'd rather do that. Right I'm giving the steam bending a go. Uh, this is my setup. Uh, I've no idea if it's going to work. Well it should work in my theory. Uh, but yeah, theory meeting practice, who knows. I'll show you the parts I've made up. So this is just a wallpaper steamer with the pipe that comes off to the wallpaper, normal wallpaper thingy. That's going straight into the tube. Above the tube, I've got a little rack, and that's what I'm putting my two pieces of capping strip on it. Uh, I'll only better do two pieces at a time with this size pipe, but if I get a bigger pipe, which I'm on the lookout for, uh, I should better do more. Um, and this is just cloth. In this particular case, it's some sort of surgery cloth or something. Don't know. Uh, but if I didn't have this, I'd just use ordinary cloth to go over the top and bottom, and that's just wrapped around with um, uh, plumber's tape or gaffer tape or something, just to hold in place. Uh, this end, I cut a small hole in the bottom, probably can't see it, but it's a whole small hole in the bottom. As soon as I cut the hole, which was intended to let the water escape, uh, a lot of steam came out. So I just propped this up against it, uh, and this is obviously absorbing all the moisture, because you can see how wet it is. Uh, and, but helping to prevent the steam from escaping, at least as fast. Um, one of the things you don't want to do is turn this into a pressure container. Right, the steam is boiling away quite nicely. Uh, I'm staying well clear of that. Don't want to be around that if it blows up. Um, and we've got steam through to the pipe. And I'm just about to set the timer. It's just started, I'm about to set the timer. Uh, don't know how long to leave this for. Just 
going to take a little while to penetrate through to the wood. Um, but, don't know, don't know, maybe half an hour. Give that a go, pull, pull the two pieces out and see what happens. Right, it's been about 12 minutes. Just kind of curious. Um, and there's two pieces in there, so I can leave the other one in there for uh, a lot longer. Let's see if we can get one out safely. Last thing I want to do is play with scalding hot steam. I'm going to move pretty quickly, I'm going to understand it. Oh, it does feel pliable. That feels pretty much spot on actually. Yep, let me move that across. Yes. I'm going to pull the other one out as well. Excellent. That's looking really good. Can you see that? Yep, you can. Right. Let's see if we can pull the other one out. Cool. So let's let that dry and cool down. It's feeling cool already to the touch. I've read before that you've got to move pretty quick before the um, before it loses its flex. And then we'll pull these out and we'll see how much spring back and how well they keep the shape. Very cool. If it's that quick and easy, wow. Okay, right, I'll come back to you in about 15 minutes. Right, I've got them both out. There's definitely a curve introduced, but nothing like, no, not as much as I would have, as I was hoping for. This is probably the spring back that I've read about. So if I pop this back in here, that's a heck of a lot of spring back. So what I'm thinking, actually before I talk about that, uh, I shaped it against this. It's not looking so bad there. Um, it's a little bit of pressure needed to bring it back down, but nothing like the pressure that was needed before. But I think I can do better. And I think what's telling is where it leaves the um, leaves the web, which is about here. So what I'm picking is if I shave off the top of the form, I shave this part off. Oh, oh just a moment. Just a moment. If I shave this part off across here with the table saw, that'll probably bring that curve back down again and I should have, I should better control that spring back a little bit more. In fact I might even bring it down and curve it down this way. Yeah I think I'll give that a go. Better get a roll route because, yes I think that's the plan. So I'm going to bring it up to about here and then curve it to come back down this way and that'll hopefully get rid of some of that spring back. I'm not going to get rid of it, but it means the spring back will come back to around about where I want it. So I'm talking out loud. Right, let's give that a crack. Right, this is how much I'm going to take off. That's down probably a little bit less than it was poking up when it came out. Somewhat less, I think. So it should be a fairly safe amount. I can always take more off. So I'll take that up to there. Then I'll get the rasp out and I'll just make the curve meet that, get rid of the sharp corner. So continue this curve, meet that and have this down here. Then with a bit of luck, uh, once it comes out it'll spring back to roughly this area, probably just above this plane. Fingers crossed. So, right, get that table saw out, give that a crack. I put the same two sample sticks back in. Uh, one thing I noted was um, as the sticks dried or cooled down the bend started decreasing, so I've obviously got to keep it into the foot in the former for a lot longer. Not going to matter with these ones because they're tester ones anyway. Um, so you can probably see the steam escaping. It's been about 12-15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to turn the turn the steamer off, then quickly whip those two pieces out and put them into the into the form and see how this transpires. Uh, 
that's what we've got. So more of a definitely pushing up against that top edge there. More of a gap along here, but I don't mind that. What's more interesting is the gap between these two. That's not even for some reason. And I'm not too sure why or if that's important, but I'm picking it's because it was cooling as I was clamping it down. And it may have caused a stress point. So I think the key there is to move faster and get that clamped into position quicker. And what I could feel as I clamped it was there's obviously still a rise going up from there uh, before it came back to this, which I wasn't feeling when I was pushing down. Um, so yeah, move quicker. I think that's the answer there. Right, third go. So I've taken this curve down a bit further. Give you an idea of how much it's changed. This is the original shape. Then you can see, yeah, much more pronounced curve put, put into it. Um, so I've taken that down. I'll give it another go with the uh, steamer. I'll put the same two pieces back in. Uh, and if that works out approximately right, I'll try another fresh two pieces and see if that works. Uh, cool. Um, I left these in for half an hour and the bend has still come back but it's still left quite a bit of a bend in there which is good uh, put that into context there we go so I'm hoping with the new bit I'll get rid of that little gap under under there and pull it down a little bit further at the back uh, but even if I don't pull it down further at the back that's actually not too bad I'm quite happy with that but we'll see if we can make it better Right, this is a go three. These have been steaming for about 12 13 minutes. I'm going to try and work quickly, uh, much quicker this time, so I'm not going to be saying much. So right, so we've been calling for about half an hour. These ones look like. Still off spring back. Spring back to about there. Still quite a bit of spring back. But they're fitting the curve a lot better on there. Not quite where I'd like it to be. All right, fourth go. It's been sanded back. Uh, it's been steaming for about 15 minutes, a little bit longer than the other ones. So, it turns off. Right, let's do a fit test um, with these uh, with the scrap timber. One of these out at a time. Right. Good luck. And with a bit of luck that'll relax a bit and cover that, um, sit back on that gap. Fingers crossed. And if it doesn't, well the T88 will probably sort that. I think we're in business. Uh, that's good. It's enough of a curve to sort out the stress problems I was worried about. And there's enough of a dip down here to get rid of most of the, um, what do you call it, flat back problems. 
Uh, I could take this this angle down further, take it down further, but I'm not seeing much mileage in doing that to be honest. So I'm going to run with this, prime it, get some ribs done, jobs are good on. Hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers. Well I'm into the steam bending of these wide cap strips and I thought I'd capture this a little bit. It might settle down but I suspect it probably won't. Uh, so this is two of those spar end ribs. So number three and number four. And what I've got is about here. Now the steamer finishes about there and it's out, completely outside the steamer from about there onwards. So it seems to be in the transition zone and it's kind of cupped, curves up here and I saw it happen while I was in the steamer it's a bit unusual I'm not too sure what's caused it or whether it'll just come right by itself but as I said, I don't think it will, I'm pretty sure once you've steam bent it uh, you're pretty much stuffed so you can't see much from there, I'll try and spin it around the other way let me get a bit of sunshine on it yeah. There you go, you can see that shadow. There should not be a shadow there like that. And if you look across the top, that should be flat across the top. And it is there, but not there. I don't know how much of this you can actually see on the video, but if not, just have to take my word for it, it's, this, uh, it's a little bit of a cupping. So I'll sleep on this, I'll probably, it's probably going to take some experimentation, which means more wasted cap strips, unfortunately. But, hey-ho, it is what it is. After some googling, got it figured out. It's uh, the recommendation for steaming timber is uh, about one hour for every inch of timber. Uh, well, of course, I'm dealing with one-eighth of an inch uh, capping strips. So by that calculation, I should be steaming for about seven and a half minutes, maybe eight minutes. Uh, and instead I've been doing 10 to 15 um, and not being too worried about how long it's been. So that's clearly the problem. Clearly might be an overstatement, but that appears to be the problem. So what I'll do is uh, when I crack on with this on the weekend, I'll steam to 8 minutes, bend and see how we go. And fingers crossed I might get that cupping effect. So, Just pausing to show uh, you guys a, a broken cap strip. It's a bit frustrating, but hey, if you don't make the mistakes, you don't learn. So this is part of that learning, unfortunately. But, so what I've got here is you should be able to see a crack line across there. That came about because I was steaming this and another one uh, and I waited six and a half minutes because I thought I could see cupping going on down here, this warping. Turns out I probably, probably wasn't, but I was obviously highly conscious of that. So I pulled it out at six and a half minutes, tried bending it, and heard that crack. I couldn't see it at the time, so I backed them both back into the steamer for a few more minutes and re-bent them, and that's when that came out. The other one, the other one's fine. But uh, yeah, a bit frustrating. And these are the current two. So no sign of any warpage. No warpage. These two are pulled out at eight minutes. So yeah, happy with that. And we'll put that bottom. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty darn good. So they should go on quite nicely, I think. So one step forward, two steps back, or is it two steps forward? Whatever, but make progress. Just a little bit more painfully than I'd like, but never mind. Right. Back into it.